Cannibal Ox, the cold vein. Classic review, Cannibal Ox, let's go. Cannibal Ox is a music duo consisting of Harlem rappers Vortal Mega and Vastaire. And for a while, this 2001 album, The Cold Vein, had been their only album. Until they followed it up in 2015 with a record whose reception was less than lukewarm. I'm not going to dwell on that now. But The Cold Vein, though, it was a watershed moment for hip-hop on the East Coast in the 2000s. The next logical step for Big Apple rappers who sought to keep the genre lyrical and gritty, but also evolve past the basic boom-bap sounds that defined the 90s. And even though up until this point, hip-hop has always had an underground scene of some sort because the underground is where the genre started, the 2000s is really where you start to see this cellular division of what hit the mainstream in hip-hop and what didn't. The sounds and lyrical styles that were more popular on both sides of the mainstream aisle were different, the artists that were popular on both sides of the mainstream aisle were different, though many tried to transition. Typically on the underground side of things, you found a lot of more obscure and conscious and abstract strains of hip-hop. And at the time, this more left-field scene was fostered across the country through a network of groups and labels. But in the case of New York, and specifically Cannibal Ox, it was Definitive Jux Records. The Cold Vein over here was the label's first full-length album release, which opened the floodgates for numerous artists whose own unique takes on this abstract style is still felt to this day. People like Aesop Rock and LP, RJD2, Cage, as well as Murder. Def Jux did end up closing shop in 2010, but not before going on to inspire great works from other artists who were connected to the scene, people like Uncommon NASA, as well as Billy Woods. And I definitely want to mention some of the newer names that have come along and progressed this New York sound in their own way that I don't think they would be here if not for the efforts of Def Jux, the now defunct Rat King, Elucid, who has also teamed up with Billy Woods in their own duo named Armand Hammer, guys like Ka as well. I see these guys as sort of kind of being a part of the same lineage, even though I think a lot of the experimentation and inspiration artists take from music these days is more internet-based than it is localized within whatever region they're living in. But at the time of the release of The Cold Vein, the sound that Vastar and Vortal Mega were creating on this record, it was localized and it was specific. As there aren't really any rappers I can think of who dropped significant records around this time who sounded anything like them. In its most comparable moments, the Cold Vein kind of sounds like a Wu-Tang cipher if the MC roster was limited to rappers who had philosophy, physics, double majors. On top of that, the production from LP on this record sounds unlike anything else that was released at the time. The closest thing I can think of are some of the beats he produced with Company Flow a few years earlier, but even some of those feel pretty distant from the glistening and grimy sounds El Producto formulates on the cold vein. Like the ghostly horn hits and space age synths on the song Iron Galaxy, kind of sounds like something out of a science lab. Or on the song Ox Out the Cage, which features these crashing chords ringing out into oblivion, these dramatic synth swells that are like something out of a sci-fi movie soundtrack. A B-Boy's Alpha's instrumental kind of resembles a RZA beat at some points with its chunky rhythms and its fractured pianos. But the vibe is kind of flipped with some other weird piano passages, effects, and delays. It's like Wu-Tang on a spirit journey. The instrumental on Painkiller is pulling from a very similar place of inspiration but with the eerie samples and theatrical organs, I feel like I'm trapped inside of an old-school horror movie or like a turn-of-the-century mental hospital where I'm being treated to electroshock therapy. The beat on Raspberry Fields is like classic LP production, the stuttering kick drums and croaking synth bass lines that sound like a frickin' mecha toad, and not to mention all the heaping helpings of sound effects laced throughout the track, too. Even though this record came out in 2001, the beats still contain the lethal qualities of hardcore hip-hop's golden age. But it's just taken to another dimension, sometimes achieving like a beautiful mystical quality like on the song Stress Rap. The instrumentals are honestly what has aged best about this album in the almost 20 years it's been since its release. This record also still stands as one of the best executions of a Jaco Pistorius sample I think I've ever heard on a hip-hop record, too. In my opinion, the lyrical performances from Vast Air and Vortal Mega are equally impressive, but I think they've aged somewhat awkwardly, and not just because these days it seems like there's less of an emphasis in ever in hip-hop on lyricism, but also through the 2000s, albums like this attracted these somewhat obnoxious leagues of 
backpack rap fans that needlessly poo-pooed the artistic merits of a rapper like Jay-Z because he just had a braggadocious style and was seeing all of this commercial success. But keep in mind, this sentiment is not specific to this scene or even this point in hip-hop history as it's been voiced at numerous times whenever the genre sort of seems to get a popularity boost, EPMD's The Crossover comes to mind. But before the internet came in and erased many of raps and other genres' artistic boundaries, many of us didn't really have the foresight to understand that a record like The Cold Vein as well as Jay-Z's The Blueprint could live in artistic harmony. So there is definitely a noticeable air of pretension to a lot of what Cannibal Ox does on this album, but it's mostly in the spirit of competition, and Vast Air and Vortal Mega's respective styles were pretty unique for the time, so I think they had reason to believe that their lyrical miracles were something special, especially when Vast Air says, we in the catacomb, nappy-headed, never used a comb, and built with the forces that blew away Dorothy's home. I grab the mic like, are you experienced? But I don't play guitar, I play my cadence. And if I exhaled arguments only to hold my breath, I would die, and I ain't talking hair color. I'm talking about the reality with my mother's eye water. The transition from dying to hair dye, then to my mother's eye water, aka tears, is kind of weird. It's one of many verses and passages on this record that stick out for their odd references and word choice, but most of what happens on the cold vein, lyrically speaking, is pretty dark, esoteric, and occasionally nerdy. Whether the duo is battling it out with aliens, like on this bit right here, or dropping poetic nods to stuff like children's stories or video games, not to mention Vastair's slightly unorthodox delivery style flows kind of like he's part rapping, but also part ranting. He can be pretty funny too, like on the song Raspberry Fields, like in this bit right here, where at the end of it, he kind of makes fun of himself for using the same word twice in his verse, oh my god, and then immediately after which he proceeds to use that whole same section of that verse over again in the same track. Almost like Cannibal Ox were annoyed with whatever standards people would be throwing onto their own music because the duo wasn't insisting that uh, what they were doing was like, I don't know, some kind of like golden rule to live by or that other people couldn't make their own styles of hip-hop music because records like this are very much about breaking the rules, not necessarily just holding up traditions. In contrast with Vast Air, Vortal Mega vibes more like a quintessential New York rapper. He's got that incredibly slick New York flow that actually could have fit on any number of Jay-Z songs had he been invited for a feature. For example, the song Straight Off the D.I.C. Dick. Effortless smooth, especially on the hook, which is incredibly catchy despite the fact that it's so friggin' wordy. And despite some of the beats on this thing being weird as hell, it does not really seem to trip up Vortal Mega's incredible sense of rhythm, especially on the song Vane, which has one of the most unlikely grooves of any hip-hop song in the 2000s. And lyrically, even though his stuff is pretty thoughtful, it's never really doing too much like many other verses or even features on this record are, like Alaska on the song Adam where he says, a lot of cats pop shit, I pop apocalypse, topple propaganda force fed to the populace, my thoughts run the gamut from outstanding to preposterous, on top of this, I move posteriors from impoverished to posh areas. <laughs> Oh, it's, which is, wow, you're really trying to work those lyrical angles, and, and you know, I do dig it, I do dig it. Or even Vast Air on this passage of lyrics right here, where at the end of it he kind of ends off with this mocking laugh, kind of like he's aware of how hard he's trying with all this stuff. Again, some bits of this record can be a little much, can be kind of over the top, but still, this is a New York hip-hop album, which very much contains the grit and guts that rappers from this city are known for, because there's plenty of deadly and murderous lyricism that can be read between these lines. But then again, there's enough emotional dynamics to this record for Cannibal Ox to come out with songs like F Word, which is essentially about romance and trying to get out of the friend zone with your opposite sex relationships. Or on the song Stress Rap, where they lyrically go off on the misery that a lot of people stuck in the NYC rat race feel. The song Painkiller is pretty focused on themes of escaping pain and addiction and depression. Meanwhile, there are numerous very smart lyrical references to birds and humanity on the song Pigeon. These themes also carry over onto the final bonus track, Screaming Phoenix 2, which ends up being kind of a cool transition point for the duo from a pigeon 
to a Phoenix. The features on this record generally add a lot of flavor to it too, like Lifelong and Sea Ray on the track Battle for Asgard, which is easily one of the most badass songs on this entire record. The appearances that LP makes on this record are not only really great, but also show just how consistent he's been over the years. From the opening lines of Ox Out the Cage to whatever he's recorded most recently with Run the Jewels, LP's style is distinct and instantly recognizable. The Cold Vein is also a pretty dense record too at 15 tracks topping 70 minutes of material. So not only are a lot of the hip hop songs on this record just throwing a lot at you, they're very layered, they're very, again, experimental and abstract, but Vast Air and Vortal Mega and LP give you a lot to sift through. And it's a lot of great stuff too with adventurous instrumentals and forward thinking lyrics and great performances and not a lull in the entire track list, assuming though that it's your cup of tea. Those are pretty much my thoughts on The Cold Vein. Classic hip-hop record, great hip-hop record, one of the best of the 2000s. Painfully sad and unfortunate that this album was essentially the start, but also <laughs> the end for Cannibal Ox in the same breath. And the scene that this record came from was kind of short-lived too. But still, it's amazing that it happened. It's amazing that all of the records and the back catalog and the artistic fingerprints are there. The influential ripples are still moving to this day. And hopefully more artists take from the experience Experimental and adventurous cues this album puts forward into the future. Tran, Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you could check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Cannibal Ox, The Cold Vein, forever.